What's up guys, it's Sean here. Now if you remember back to high school math when you connected two points on a graph with a line, you could actually solve for the linear equation of the line by hand by finding the slope and the intercept of the equation y equals mx plus c. But what if you tried to solve something like this? The challenge here is that you now have too many data points to be able to fit exactly with one straight line. So we need to allow for some error between the true and the predicted values of the straight line. So how does your computer actually figure out the equation of the line? Well, you can actually do this quite simply with a neural network, which I'm going to show you in this video. But you may be wondering, what is a neural network? Well, you can think of a neural network as a black box that takes in a predefined number of inputs and spits out a desired number of output values. It has a bunch of knobs that transform the values of the input into the output and can be tweaked to align the model's predicted output with the true output. The overall aim is to learn the particular values of those knobs that will minimize the collective error between all predictive outputs and their target output. So let's translate our line equation into a neural network. We first need to figure out our inputs and outputs from our linear equation. So we are trying to predict one output y from one input x. So starting with x, we multiply it by a weighting factor m and then add an offset c. Now that we have defined our network, let's figure out a policy for tweaking those knobs to train our network on each data point. So let's say we have an input-output pair. We first pass the input value through the network and check and see how the output value compares with the target value. If the predicted value is less than the target, then we want to bring our line up and this would require increasing the weight and bias by some amount. So let's make our update rule based on the signed error, which is the target minus predicted value, and add that amount to our weight and bias. But since the output of our model is influenced by the weight, by a factor of x, we need to also multiply x in the weights update value as well. So now that we have our updating policy, let's investigate the code of how this would actually work. So I'm in my Jupyter notebook, which is great for displaying graphs. If you don't have Jupyter Notebook installed, I'll put a link to the installation guide in the description below. So for this experiment, we'll need to import NumPy for working with arrays of data. We'll need random for generating random initial weights for our model. And finally, we'll need PyPlot from Matplotlib for displaying graphs. We need to specify how the plots will be displayed in the notebook. And also a random seed to make sure that we get the same random number each time we run this. So first we need some input and output data. So let's create four x, y data points as x data and y data. And we just need to shape it into column vectors to make it easier to work with. So let's plot the data to see what it looks like. I'm going to create a new figure and set the axes to show the whole data. And then we're going to plot the data as a scatter plot and draw the figure. So this is what our data looks like, pretty standard. So let's actually define our neural network as a function called run model, which transforms an input x to an output value y. Now m and c are the weight and bias parameters of a model that we will be tweaking later on, so we will assume that they are going to be global variables for now. So we then need to define the initial values of these parameters, and so let's set m to be random number between negative 1 and 1, and c can just be 0. So now let's plot our initial model against the data. We'll save our initial predictions in an array called y in it and just add it to the plot. So we can see that our initial model isn't too good at the moment, but this is actually the fun part where we can train it to the data. All right, so we're going to go through each x, y data point and predict the output and then calculate the signed error, which is the difference between the target value t and the predicted value y. We then make our updates to the weight and bias according to our policy but we need to do so in small steps so that our model doesn't jump around too drastically. So we'll introduce the learning rate and 0.01 .01 is a safe value. So let's just add that in there. So as we do this, let's also plot the updated model to see how it's improving. So we'll also sleep for one second so that we can see how each model is being produced. So as we can see with every data point, the predicted line is slowly shifting towards the data but we'll need to keep training it for more iterations to eventually converge to the optimal model. So let's go for 100 iterations, and this time we'll only show the most recent line and also reduce the delay to 0.1 seconds so that we can see it faster. And we'll display the final model. 
So now if we run this, we can see in real time how our model is being trained to fit the data. It will slow down and eventually will stop when it reaches a minimum error value. But how do we actually know that our model is a true linear regression? Well, we can compare it to an actual linear regression model from scikit-learn. So we'll import the linear model from scikit-learn and we'll define our linear model as linear regression and fit it to the data, which is essentially what we did, and then calculate the predicted values given our original inputs. And then we'll plot it and we can actually see that it's pretty darn close. So you've seen a basic neural network in practice, but how does this method work? Turns out there is a science and a bit of math behind how we came up with our updating policy. We were actually trying to minimize the total squared errors between our predicted and target values. But this can be defined with the equation E equals the sum of Y minus T squared. And let's divide it by two to make the maths a bit easier. So for every data point, we are looking at its own squared error of E equals a half times Y minus T squared. But as we saw earlier, the error changes in response to changing the weight and the bias. So we can imagine a graph of the error over M where a certain value of M will minimize the error. In order to get to this value of M that'll give us the minimum error, we need to follow the downward gradient of the error function with respect to M. So let's say our M value is here on the left of the optimal point. This would give us a negative gradient for the error and we would want to increase m to the optimal value. Same way if m was on the other side, the gradient would actually be positive, so subtracting the positive gradient would take us closer to the optimal value of m. So this process is known as gradient descent. So therefore, our update rule is defined as m equals m minus the learning rate alpha times the gradient of the error with respect to m for the weight, and c equals c minus the learning rate times the gradient of the error with respect to the bias. But how do we find DE on DM? It so happens that we can derive it from the error function using the chain rule. So we know that E equals a half times Y minus T squared and that Y equals MX plus C. So we can find DE on DM as DE on DM equals DE on DY times DY on DM. So let's start with DE on DY. So we'll first introduce a helper function U which equals Y minus T and that makes E equal a half times U squared. So from the chain rule again, we have DE on DY equals DE on DU times DU on DY. So for DE on DU, multiplying by the two cancels out the half, which leaves us with just U, and DU on DY is just one. So that leaves us with DE on DY is equal to just Y minus T. Now finding DY and DM is easy. Assuming all of the terms are constant, this is just the x multiplying the m. We can also get dy on dc as just 1 since it's a constant. Finally, we get de on dm is equal to y minus t times x, and de on dc is just equal to y minus t. So, for our linear regression, after we substitute the values for our gradients, we end up getting the same update policy that we had before. So there you have it, folks. That's how you do a linear regression with a neural network. Be sure to thumbs it up if you found it helpful and subscribe for more DIY machine learning videos. But until next time, keep learning like a machine. Laters.